guys welcome back to another video on the noble chemist so today we are looking at conjugate acid base pairs and we are going to assign the conjugate acid and the conjugate base based on the bronsted lowry theory stating that acids donate protons and bases accept protons okay so let's have a look at the following example if you have nitric acid okay this is my acid and water now remember water is an amphalite so it could either act as an acid or as a base but because the reaction is with an acid the water is going to act as a base so what's going to happen is my acid is going to donate its hydrogen ion to the water so you will be left behind with a nitrate ion which is aqua and your water will take up the proton because it's acting as a base so you will have hydronium ion as well now to assign the conjugate acid base pair so how this works is you know this is your acid right so the conjugate base of the acid is this one here okay so this is the conjugate acid base pair and the reason why is because you started off with an acid it gave away a proton and now this becomes a conjugate base which means that this can now act as a base and accept a proton again okay so acid conjugate base then for your base which was water in this case because it accepted a proton it now becomes so this is the conjugate acid base pair so now this becomes the conjugate acid okay and the reason for why is because now your hydronium ion can donate another hydrogen give it away as an acid would and then it would become water again okay so that was the first example so i would like you guys to just pause the video and try the next three examples by yourself see if you can manage to do that um, and then i'll quickly go through the answers with you okay so hopefully you pause the video otherwise you can just watch with me so this is sulfuric acid right and this is a normal hydroxide ion okay and this is a hydroxide ion and this is then acting as your base so the first thing you know note about this acid is that it is a diprotic acid diprotic okay what does that mean it means that it has two hydrogens that it can give away so i'm going to show you both um, reactions the, the first one where it only gives away the first hydrogen and in the second reaction where it gives away the second hydrogen okay so starting off by giving away the first hydrogen so that acid will then have one hydrogen remaining plus it gave a hydrogen ion to the hydroxide so that then becomes h2o okay so that would be the first giveaway of a proton the second giveaway is now with this hso4 minus so if it gives away um, another proton then it becomes a sulfate ion and then your water gaining a hydrogen or accepting a hydrogen then becomes hydronium ion okay so now we're going to assign conjugate acid base pairs so if we look at our acid here so the conjugate acid base pairs would be this species here and it will also be this species here so these two species are conjugate bases 
And the reason why they conjugate bases is because they can now accept a proton again to become sulfuric acid. Then your hydroxide ion, which was your base, accepted a proton, okay, and became these two species, which is now identified as your conjugate acids. And the reason for that is because they now can give away their hydrogen. They can give away their hydrogen ions, okay, which would be a characteristic of a acid. Right, um, let's look at the next example. Okay, so in the next example, sodium hydroxide with water. Now in this case, um, because you're working with sodium hydroxide um, salt, what we are actually doing in essence is we are dissolving the sodium hydroxide and all that will happen is that the sodium hydroxide is going to dissociate into its respective ions okay it's not going to be an acid base reaction it's just a normal dissolve your salt in water okay so um you don't necessarily have conjugate acid base pair okay because you can see that the sodium hydroxide um cannot gain another hydrogen okay so it's just going to dissolve in water okay so remember that if you have a beaker of water and you add your salt when this starts to dissociate you basically have a beaker full of ions and all of these ions are sort of just drifting inside of the solution so remember that the more moles okay of hydroxides that you have inside of your certain volume of solution the higher the concentration of your hydroxide ions will be and the higher the concentration of the hydroxide ions the lower the concentration of hydronium ions which means it's more basic than it is acidic and so the more basic it is the higher the pH will be and we're going to look at pH and pH calculations um, in uh, some of the upcoming videos okay the next example looking at hydrogen carbonate and ammonia so your ammonia is a very weak base and your hydrogen carbonate is a very weak acid okay so automatically you know that the base is going to gain a proton from the acid and the acid is going to donate one of its protons so um, it's also, this is a solid, so the ions are in solution, and your ammonia will become ammonium, because it now gained a proton. So to assign the acid-base pairs, this is your weak acid. Remember, it is a diprotic acid, but because it's weak, you only have um, incomplete ionization. So... You, you might find more of these species than actually finding carbonate species, okay? Um, depending on the conditions. Okay, so it's incomplete ionization. So this will be the conjugate base. And why? Because it can accept the proton to then become a conjugate acid. Whereas your ammonia will form a conjugate acid. Okay, so let me just write out the name here of ammonium. So ammonium is then a possible conjugate acid because now it can give away, donate the proton to then become a base. Okay, in the next example, we're looking at um, acetic acid and ammonia again. So this is going to be a weak acid. So it's going to donate that proton over there. And this is a weak base as well. Okay, it's going to accept this proton. So what is going to remain after the reaction? You're just going to have 
an iron forming because that hydrogen ion was given away. This is in solution and you will have ammonium ions forming in solution as well. Okay, so to assign your acid base pairs, this is your acid and this will be the conjugate base. Why? Because it is the conjugate base because it can now accept a proton over here. Okay, so that's a conjugate acid base pair. Then with the ammonia, this is another conjugate acid base pair and this will then be your conjugate acid. Okay, looking at the next example, again, hydrochloric acid in water. So, what we're doing here is going to act as the proton donor, and the water will act as the base, which will be the proton acceptor, right? So, if this is given, if the hydrochloric acid gives away the proton, you have a chloride ion, and the water accepts the the proton to become hydronium ion. Okay, so in essence that's what happens with that reaction. So the acid will have a conjugate acid base pair associated with this chloride and this chloride will then be our conjugate base. Okay, then your base accepted a proton and became a conjugate acid. Why? Because now it can give away a proton to become water again. Okay, last example, um, phosphoric acid and ammonia. So this is a very strong acid and it's triprotic acid. Okay, it's a triprotic acid, so it has three protons that it can donate. And once again, this is going to be your base. So, um, let's just for the purposes of this example let's just donate one proton over there for now so for the first one it will become H2PO4 minus plus ammonium okay if it gives away if this gives away another proton it will become HPO4 2 minus plus ammonium if it gave away that proton then it will just become a normal phosphate ion okay so now to assign your acid base pairs this is my acid so each one of these will be part of the conjugate acid base pairs and these species will all be conjugate bases why because they can accept another proton and for the ammonia these will all be the conjugate acid base pairs and these will be conjugate acids and why is that because they can now donate a proton Okay, so that's all for conjugate acid base pairs. Um, stay tuned for the next video. Then we'll talk about the strength of acids and bases. And then we'll jump into the pH calculations. 